All right, this is a quick guide uh, just on how you can set up and configure your Houdini user interface uh, to look like mine, or it might give you some insights on how you could customize it uh, to your liking. So I did prepare like a list that's like a point by point walkthrough and some resources, uh, file downloads and stuff like that on my uh, wiki on my website. Um, but I figured it would be useful to just go through and do like a first hand kind of POV uh, walkthrough of, of how this is achieved. Uh, so this is just a stock Houdini 19. I figured it'd, it'd be a good time to do it with the new release uh, coming out. So if I'm making my own desktop, usually I just start resizing things like this. Um, I like to expand the network view to take up. So we just have kind of a right side, left side, uh, more screen space and all that. And then if you press the P key over um, the network view, you'll notice it more when I have a node down here. Uh, this will bring up this parameter window here that you can resize and, and all that uh, cool stuff. So if you don't want to see it, you can press P, just quick keyboard sh shortcut. And if you want to see it again, uh, you can see it like that. So we do that. Uh, the next thing I like to do is change the node shapes. So especially with this null, it's quite noticeable. Uh, I just get confused having to click in different places and all that stuff. Uh, I just kind of like minimalism or simplicity. So the first thing I do in this to, to change this, I believe is um, tools. Sorry, it's been a little bit. So instead of show custom node shapes right here, just click that. Uh, and then in the edit menu, if you go to preferences, uh, network editor, um, I'll use simplified uh, shape when node shape is off. So you'll see that that kind of turns it into perfect crisp uh, rectangles. Uh, the other thing that I like to change is this um, stacked look for node shapes with interesting contents. Interesting contents just means you double click and you can go inside of it. Uh, and I, I don't really like that, like drop shadow. I kind of find it redundant or whatever. So I usually turn that off as well. And then you get rid of that. Um, and I also find this node uh, ring to be redundant. It's just a repetition of the flags that are on the node. Uh, so to change that, you can just press the D key and then node size to show ring. Just uh, never show the ring. Uh, long wire fading, I usually also reduce that. Uh, that's just if you have really long um, connections in a network or whatever, it will start to kind of dim them or hide them. Uh, and I, I kind of find that counterproductive or I don't know, usually if, if I'm connecting something, I, I have it in there somewhat intentionally and I want to, to see it. You can use dots and, and nulls and, and uh, object merges and stuff like that if you want clean straight wires that are well organized. Um, the next thing I usually like to change as well is this non-compilable uh, SOP badge. Usually I turn that on. Uh, that's just for for loops if you're, you're compiling. It's more of an advanced thing that I'm not gonna get into right now. Uh, and then under themes, this is a little redundant, but no shapes theme, you could turn that no shapes. We've already disabled that with the steps we took earlier. Um, default node colors. I usually sh choose no colors theme. Um, if you do see me putting down nodes that get automatically colored, I'm doing that through an uncreated Python script that I might get into later. But I'm, I'm not a big fan of managing uh, node colors through this uh, view here. Um, and then the next thing, this is another thing that's a little more advanced, but usually um, under Asset Manager, Manager Windows Asset Manager, um, configuration tab here, if you do Asset Definition, definition Toolbar, I usually turn that to Show Always. And what that's gonna do is introduce a little bar at the top of your parameters. Um, for digital assets and stuff like that, it can make a, a big difference. Not always, um, but for certain nodes, like maybe the scatter 
Um, this one was a note that they actually introduced like a new namespace. So you could revert back to the older scatter node if you needed to. Um, I believe poly extrude was another one that they versioned up. Um, if you're at a facility or you use a lot of Houdini digital, digital assets, um, it's just helpful information to make sure you're, you're on maybe the latest uh, namespace or the latest version. Um, if you're working on tools that are under active development, you quite possibly could have like older uh, definitions or older versions of uh, HDIs in your scene. So if you're, you're doing a lot of work with that kind of stuff, I usually like to have that bar open. Uh, so that's, we're getting closer. Um, with the desktop, once I have it laid out like this, uh, there's a few more stuff I do. So I'll do um, split pane top bottom. And then I usually introduce a few things here. I might do the uh, geometry spreadsheet. I might do a network. Sometimes I like to have another network view. Um, and I usually like to have some of these code editors, text port, as well as the uh, Python shell. And when you have multiple node editors like this, um, if, you don't want, <clears throat> if you don't want them linked together, like following each other like that, usually what I'll do here is just right click, set this one to nine, right click over here, set this one to one, and then right click here and set this one to one. So this means right now my viewport will follow uh, this network pane that's labeled one. And then if I did want to adopt the other one, if you have other uh, uh, geometry, maybe the Craig. Um, so if I did switch this to nine, then I would be viewing this pane down here. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and then on the shelves, um, I usually set these to text just to save uh, more real estate or screen space or whatever. Um, there's a few more preferences I, I can go through. Um, play bar UI, I usually set that to compact. It might require me to uh, restart before those changes take effect. Um, we can go ahead and save. You'd save this desktop as whatever you want. I usually just use my initials. And uh, then in your preferences, you can set Houdini to automatically load in that uh, UI. Um, let me just, usually I also turn off this animate network changes. I just find it a little distracting. I think that's pretty much it there. Uh, on the D key, when you press that over the, the viewport like this, um, under geometry here, level of detail, I usually bring that as low as it can go. If you're viewing uh, massive amounts of primitives or geometry, uh, that can speed things up quite a bit. So I usually reduce that. Um, I will usually introduce some of these anti-alias samples. Uh, it's not super expensive and it does help smooth some lines. And then uh, background, I usually prefer the dark, uh, just a black uh, viewport background, um, especially if you're working with pyro or volumes, um, it's just closer to what you're gonna see if you do a render. So if you work on a lot of effects and you're judging like transparency and uh, alpha and pre-multiplication, all that stuff, you, you want this looking as close as your uh, final render for sure. And under perspective, I also do this correction toolbar. So this gives you uh, exposure, color controls, you can isolate channels and stuff like that. So it's similar controls you would have on a renderer, which is pretty helpful in the viewport. Um, if you do make these changes, just make sure to save the desktop to update it. And one of the last things is getting this slate custom color theme. So if you notice right now, there's a lot of like drop shadows, um, 
on this UI or on the, the elements, there's a lot of like extra shading that I find a little bit like distracting or unnecessary. Um, so there's actually a custom uh, theme that I got from Oddforce a long time ago, but it, it still works um, despite all the Houdini updates and everything like that. So you can just download that. Um, I'll just put it in my downloads folder and it's pretty small file size. Um, you can extract it uh, to wherever. And then once you get these files from the slate folder, uh, you, you don't need the readme. The readme will actually probably contain the same instructions that I'm uh, giving you right now. It's just saying to put all these in your config folder of the Houdini directory. Whoops. Um, so we can do that right now. So depending on what operating system you're in, usually um, Houdini preferences, they're stored in the version number of your home, home uh, folder. And then we find the config directory. And if we just take these files here, put them in, we might need to relaunch Houdini for this as well, but you would be able to change these in your color settings. So yeah, I don't see them right now. Um, let me just reboot, relaunch Houdini. And it looks like maybe I forgot to save some of these. This was save as default. I, I forgot to touch that button. So we'll just do this, the uh, anti-alias, save as default. And what else were we going to do? Edit, uh, color settings. You could go into the slate theme. So you do notice it's just like, a, I don't know, I find it a little easier on the eyes. Just a little less shading, um, more of a, ooh, ooh, not that one. All right, we might just need to reload. Okay. So just in general, more of a um, minimal, I would say, like uh, simple UI. So that's, and then you will, you do notice down here, we've switched to the compact uh, play bar. So again, most of the changes and stuff like that that I do, I just try to keep a very stripped down, um, lightweight kind of like starting point for, for working inside of Houdini. And then I can add complexity and uh, extra stuff and like as I need. So even if you do windows, uh, you can add like new floating panel. Um, you can turn these into whatever, if you, anything you want, if you wanted like another 3D scene viewer, um, you can start to get as complex as you want with all of these. So like, I just try to start as, as minimal or, or simple as I can, and then uh, build complexity from there. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all the main points that we hit. I do provide the desktop file. Um, if you just want to download that, you can skip some of the kind of like configuration I was doing. Um, and then there's some advanced tips down here. You could change your Houdini environment variables or using packages. Um, if you want a custom splash screen, sometimes I'll do that uh, on stream. Uh, sometimes I just get tired of, of looking at the same splash screen over and over again. Um, but other than that, I think we made it through all of these um, tips. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, but yeah, I hope you found this uh, helpful.